Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm happy uh, to welcome you here to my presentation about the new labeling thresholds for MIT. So um, most of you might deal with water-based products, so um, a lot of you use um, active ingredients in their products. And um, yeah, so you might have heard about that very hot topic um, which is going on in the biocide landscape, that the labeling thresholds of MIT will be lowered. So in this presentation, I would like to give you a rough overview about um, the regulatory challenges for in-can preservation. Um, for example, to give information, what does BPR mean? Um, what is the process about evaluation? Um, and moreover, of course, I will show you some solutions how you can um, achieve an um, effective preservation without the use of MIT. But let's start with the basics. So um, to understand what is BPR, the best uh, we refer to the, um, to the definition by ECHA. So ECHA uh, says that BPR concerns the placing on the market and the use of biocidal products. BPR aims to improve the functioning of the biocidal product market. And one of the most important points, BPR tries to ensure a higher level of protection for humans and the environment. So this last point is quite important because all of these new um, classification and labeling changes are related to this um, yeah, protection of humans. Um, one of these um, human threats is a skin sensitization. Um, BPR tries to avoid the humans to be uh, skin sensitized. Um, so the skin sensitizers we use um, in the biocidal um, landscape are under pressure. And the biggest group of skin sensitizer in use are the isotiazolinones. At the moment, um, we only have few actives approved for product type 6, so for the wet state preservation. Um, some of them um, is already one isotiazolinone, the CMIT-MIT is already approved, and moreover DBDCB and um, IPBC and GDH. But a lot of actives are under review. So what does that mean, to be under review? That means um, someone is handing in a dossier for an active substance. This dossier is then evaluated by a competent authority. And this competent authority makes a proposal of the classification and labeling for this active substance. After the proposal is published, the proposal will hand over to the risk assessment committee and they will form an opinion about the harmonized classification and labeling of this substance. So when you look um, at this, so I only listed some of the actives which are under review for PT6, but if you look to this list, um, four proposals are available, but only one RAC opinion is yet available. Um, and moreover, if you have a look to this, um, what will come and what is under review now, there are five isotiazolinones uh, among all the actives. At the beginning, I mentioned that isotiazolinones are skin sensitizer. Um, and um, so I, I would like to, to, to build the bridge. Why is there so many skin sensitizing potential there? So as some of you might know, um, MIT as well as CMIT, MIT um, were and are broadly used in cosmetics. So in rinse off cosmetics as well as leave on cosmetics. So it means they are used in a skin contact application. This is something you wash your hair with, you, you, you uh, use a lotion or you use makeup, so you have a skin contact. And of course, here skin sensitizing can occur quite quickly. So cosmetics and um, industrial application are regulated under two different regulations. Um, MIT in the cosmetic regulation um, in the past was allowed to use up to 100 ppm for rinse off products. But the scientific committee for consumer safety, they considered, whoa, that's much high. So we consider a lower uh, limit for use of MIT in cosmetics and rinse off. So they considered these 15 ppm for use for safe use. Um, and um, two months ago, so in February this year, 
they um, adopted these um, concentration limits, these 15 ppm, they adopted to the NX5 of the cosmetic regulation. So up to now, uh, for rinse uh, off cosmetics, only 15 ppm MIT are allowed. What does it mean for MIT in industrial products? We are dealing here with industrial products. Um, where is the connection? So um, at the moment, we MIT is still under self-classification, means we have a generic concentration limit of 1,000 ppm. You are free to use up to 1,000 ppm, not more, um, and that's okay. But the competent authority, Slovenia, who, um, who dealt with the dossier for MIT, um, applied for a specific concentration limit for these skin sensitizing properties for 600 ppm to protect the humans. Yeah, and what happened? I mentioned already, the competent authority has to hand over the, uh, its results to the um, risk assessment committee. So, what happened? Yeah, the RAC, the risk, assess risk assessment committee, did not adopt Slovenia's proposal about the harmonized classification and labeling. So, they lowered the specific concentration limit. You see here, this was a specific concentration limit um, Slovenia proposed. And here, this is a specific concentration limit which, put, uh, which RAC put in its opinion. So, it's much lower. Why the RAC decided to set up this limit to 15 ppm? So they looked to the dossier and to the data in the dossier and decided that the animal testing results were not enough to prove that 600 ppm would be safe. Moreover, the human data they have there were not enough for them. And a very, very important point, some of you might have heard, is the epidemic formation of allergies against MIT. Um, so the public health was, was in threat. So this was a very important point. So they said, no, we have to lower the limit from 600 to 15. Yeah, the RAC opinion, this classifi uh, classification and labeling of the RAC opinion um, has to be adopted. So we expect that um, these harmonized classification and labeling will be included in the 10th ATP, in the adaption to the technical process, mid of this year, end of this year. And uh, about 12 to 18 months later, this um, will come into force. <clears throat> but, yeah, we have now a lower limit, but what does it mean for our application? Yeah, so, um, <laughs> um, there we can refer to the one isotiazolinone who is already, uh, which is already approved. So CMIT, MIT is already approved under BPR. And what is, what is the impact of the limit of CMIT, MIT to the market, to the industrial application market? Um, the opinion on the application for approval of CMIT, MIT makes a quite important differentiation um, between professional users and non-professional users. Um, here they say, okay, professional users they shall, um, they shall use personal protective equipment, then they can, they can handle products with um, more than 15 ppm CMIT, MIT. But for non-professional users, they say clearly the concentration of CMIT, MIT in treated articles shall not exceed the threshold value set for sensitizing properties. Means, if you exceed the H317 limit, then you are not allowed to use it in do-it-yourself applications. If we would now transfer this to MIT, that would mean more than 15 ppm MIT are not allowed for do-it-yourself applications either. So, that's a huge impact on our, uh, on our preservation systems on the market, because MIT would be banned for preservation in the market. Yeah, what might be the consequences? If MIT will be banned from the market, yeah, the market loses a broad spectrum uh, active. If you, have, yeah, if you have less active, your preservation could get worse. There might some formation of tolerances if you use low dosages. There might uh, some resistant strains might occur. And in the, in the end, your, contamination will be, uh, your product will be spoiled. Complaints will increase. And these complaints might cause an economical and ecological damage. 
we made here um, a case study um, based on uh, some numbers from the German paint market from 2015. So we assumed that almost all interior paints are in camp preserved. This were roughly, 2015, were roughly um, 400,000 metric tons of interior paint with a value of 550 million euro. If you assume now, due to bad conservation, you have 1% of complaints due to the spoilage, that would mean you have 4,000 metric tons uh, interior paint spoiled with a value of 5 million euro. Yeah, but not only these spoiled products, you also have to reship it from your customer, you have to handle it and dispose it. This is also a uh, cost, additional costs, roughly the same high. So you might have an economical damage on the market for roughly 10 million euro. You see, a good preservation is needed without MIT. So Langs has developed several options to have an efficient MIT-free income preservation. So there are only few standard actives left. You see here, we have BIT, CMIT and OIT, Zinc Pyrocyone, Bronopole, DBDCB and formaldehyde releasers. So, means BIT is one of the stable biocides in the application. It's good as a combination partner. CMIT, MIT will get a revival because its threshold limit, under its threshold limit, it is effective. Zinc Pyrocyone is a good combination partner with no sensitizing potential. Um, Bronopol and DBDCB are also quite good actives for water-based products with a good compatibility. Um, and formaldehyde releaser, yes, you can use, but Langsess did not consider it due to multiple limitations of uh, formaldehyde releasers in the market. So we have these six actives, um, and you can combine each with each other. But every one of it has its pros and cons. So some of them have a long-term preservation, others have a quick kill, Ma uh, some act particularly against Pseudomonas, or some have a very good fungicidal efficacy. So it's very important to find here the right combination to have a broad spectrum active. <clears throat> we decided to go first with some BIT combinations. We combined BIT with CMIT, MIT, BIT with Zinc Pyrethione, BIT with Bronopol, as well as BIT with OIT. All of these combinations are VOC-free aqueous dispersions. I would now like to go more in detail to each of the um, formulations. The first one is uh, the combination of uh, BIT, CMIT, MIT, our Preventol BIT, IT. This is, uh, shows an excellent efficacy in a lot of applications. It's fast acting, it has a long term protection, and it's also excellent against spoilage organisms isolated from, um, yeah, from plant strains. Um, with this, you have a Blue Angel label, an eco-label um, eco um, paint is possible. And for some of you who might produce adhesives or a polymer emulsions uh, where a food contact is needed, um, here all necessary FDA claims are given. Here on the right, we have a, uh, have a graph of this uh, showing the efficacy. Um, on the x-axis, there is the dosage of the um, product Preventol BITIT, and on the ordinate, there is the evaluation um, if it's passed or it's failed our test. So um, the results are given as a mean value um, tested from different paints. So you see, um, a dosage of 0.1% of Preventol BIT is already sufficient to have a very good preservation against different organisms. The product Preventol BZX combines, uh, combines the actives BIT and Zinc Pyrocyone. This is one of the only options where you are able to avoid the EUH208 labeling in your final product. With a um, concentration lower than 0.11, where it is in some applications quite effective, you can avoid the EUH label. You see here, quite good efficacy, so it is a broad spectrum and um, effective combination. The next combination is Preventol BO, a combination of BIT and OIT. So it's um, very strong, also against fungi, 
um, it can be compared in its efficacy against um, the combination of Preventol BZX. So a um, um, Blue Angel listing is ongoing, so as soon uh, we also can provide you here with a Blue Angel label for this product. The last BIT combination product is a combination of BIT with Bronopol. So uh, this is a very strong and very efficient combination with fast-acting properties as well as long-term preservation. Here we have the special strengths that the uh, Bronopol supports the BIT, especially in its um, activity against Pseudomonas and um, some slime forming and anaerobic bacteria. Um, you are also able um, to have an equal label um, paint with this uh, product and also all um, necessary um, FDA claims uh, are given for this combination. The efficacy you see here for bacteria is very well for each dosages. For fungi, you see in the low dosages, it's lacking a little bit. But as soon as you um, use up to 0.2%, you have an efficient um, preservation against all tested organisms. Up to now, I am showed you only BIT combination products, means including an isotiazolinone. But due to the fact that all ITs might be under pressure, Langsys would like to enable you to preserve also isotiazolinone free. For a totally isotiazolinone free preservation, we have the product Biocheck 722. For 722, we used an alternative active where Langsys um, holds uh, the Article 95 listing. This is DBDCB, Dibromodizianobutan. DBDCB is already approved under BPR, and you see here the labeling. It is a skin, a skin sensitizer, but we have no specific concentration limit, so you are free up to use 1,000 ppm. Um, it's particularly effective against Pseudomonas. It allows you a long-term protection, and yeah, the last things I already mentioned. <laughs> Um, when you looked to different applications here and to the efficacy of our new combination, not only DBDCB, we combined it with Bronopol. So here you have a good combination. Quick acting due to Bronopol, long-term protection due to um, DBDCB, you are totally isotiazolinone free, and it's acting in concentrations of 0.15 to 0.2 in several applications. We tested here adhesives, polymer resins, and paint, and you see we can expect a very good efficacy. So, that's the end of my presentation. I thank you for your attention, and um, maybe um, I, I'm happy to um, see you at our booth in uh, 145 here in Hall 7. So, feel free to ask.